I'm Justin Apego, standing in the backyard here at my 1915 Craftsman style house that I've been fixing up. And today I have a special guest, ladies and gentlemen, Rob North. Peace, people. Master Craftsman Rob North. Oh, it's like I'm standing in a hole. <laughs> I feel like a giant. <laughs> well, obviously I need more than one bar inside. So today we're gonna build a bar that has a pretty cool top. We, we're gonna yeah, do a yeah. cedar top with a welded base. You'll see it's gonna have a kind of an interesting configuration. L-shaped bar, but it's gonna be a transformer. A transforming bar. I have no idea what we're doing. I'm just kind of rolling with it. Okay, here's a big difference between me and Rob. I would imagine that when you're in your shop, you probably like draw plans. Usually. Or, or maybe write out a cut list. At least. Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this is my way. We're not doing that today. So if we're next time we'll be in your shop, <laughs> we'll do it that way. Well, today it's gonna be more like an improv. Hey man, I'm down with improv. Did you know what's a school for acting? Is that right? I did. A lot of folks don't know that. And so improv was part of the curriculum. Okay, well this will be the yes and school of uh, <laughs> of, of construction. All right. <laughs> That's a whole new dynamic. All right. So we're gonna start. We're gonna start by cutting metal. If there's one tip I can impart to you folks, now, let me just share this with you. A lot of folks are uh, fearful of like a saw like this or hell, any power tool. And you should be, they should be respected. But oftentimes that fear will either ruin the material or get you hurt. So you have to know when to be aggressive, you right. know, and when to get in there and grab it. Don't hurt yourself, don't put yourself in danger, but don't, don't be afraid. Fear will get you hurt. Take it away. Fear will get you hurt. That's gonna be the subtitle of this video. Okay, so now we have one piece at 15 and we set up a rob, set up a stop block so that we can just churn these out without having to measure every time. So that's that's something you can do to save yourself some time. Especially when you have to make a lot of something and they all have to be the same size. Right. Make the next Boom. Do you want to use this saw? Why the hell not? Yeah. I love the fact that we're doing this on, on the internet. I get to say things like, why the hell not? You can say whatever you want. I can say shit and <clears throat> piss and all kind of stuff? Yeah. Not that I would for any reason. I think that there's a way for me to bleep stuff, but I don't know how to do it. So, why would I? So yeah, this is this is cool. So it's a sliding miter saw too, huh? Yeah. Oh, dude, I like that. Oh, oh. Right? I'm digging that. It's actually a really nice saw, man. I like it a lot. And we're drinking after this, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we better be. The time has come to cut wood. This is gonna be the bar top. I got a bunch of cedar from a tree that my friends Hannah and Chris cut down. And they've got a pretty cool Etsy shop. Seraphim Craftworks, where they've got they've got some cool woodworking things that they do. They also make chain mail and all kinds of crazy things. But uh, they chopped down a tree on their property and I was able to get a bunch of this cedar from them that they milled themselves with chainsaws. All right, so what we want to do, we have two full slabs, and Justin's idea here is to make it so that we have an L shape. A couple of challenges. There are no straight lines on here, nothing square. But we want to turn this and that into an L, and the miters need to line up nice and neat, and we have no real reference point to work with, so we, have, we need to create something. Because normally, if you if you had a regular piece of lumber, then you know that the sides of it are square, they'd be parallel with each other. Right, right. You know that it's basically true to itself. In this case, nothing is nothing is square. Nothing is true. It's doing that. Yeah. It's doing this. Yeah. So we have to we have to deal with that, and that's that's not that tough. All you need is a framing square. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's just kind of lay it on there, kind of arbitrarily, and eyeball it. And I want to make sure that as I look down it, this line is not outside of it, that live edge of the of the slab. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm just gonna draw this out, no particular you know place, and just drawing two lines. Now here's the magic. I'm gonna to go to the 10 inch mark here, mark that, and go 10 inches here and mark this side. And so we're gonna go back, we're gonna use this line along this edge of the square and that mark we made. And I used 10 inches, but it didn't have to be 10, it could have been 7, it could have been 16. As long as they're both the same. As long as they're both the same. And you just wanna make sure that you're on this line, you're not drifting off in any direction, and that you're on that 10 inch mark we made. And we're gonna draw this out. In case you haven't figured it out yet, we're making a box. If we make a box, a square that is, we know that a square is, is uh, equal on all four sides. Once we create that equality, then all we have to do is cut that in half, bisect it. So there's our box. If I draw a line from this corner to that corner, it has to be 45 degrees. Right. Ain't nothing else it can be. 
And that's how you get 45 degrees when you have no idea where it is. And that, dear friends, is our cut. That is a thing of beauty. Isn't it? Yeah. I'm pretty good, ain't I? <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Hot damn. I get to say hot damn. Say it again. <laughs> hot damn. I think we built a bar. I think we did. Good day's work. Nice, comfortable, L-shaped bar. Could put a stool on the other side of it over there if you had more than one friend. And if you wanted to, you can reconfigure it so that it is a straight bar instead of an L. That's sticking. probably the coolest part of the whole design. And it's funny because you first mentioned it, I was like, uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Dude, it works all day. It's fantastic. The bar looks good, but there is one problem with the bar. What's that? There is no drink on it. That's a critical problem. So we're gonna go to my other bar and fix that. Okay, so when you have built a bar and you want to come up with a related cocktail, that's not easy because pretty much every cocktail is related to a bar. Yeah. However, when you have built a bar and you built it with Master Craftsman Rob North, who is also United Stay States back. Marine, we're gonna make a drink that's related to having Rob over. This is called 1775 Rum Punch. And well, you tell them why we're making this. Uh, back in 1775, yeah. in Philadelphia, there was a small place called Tun Tavern. And this captain named, uh, named Samuel, he was tasked with forming two battalions of Continental Marines. And it was on that date, November 10th, 1775, my Marine Corps came alive. And so there in Tun Tavern, if you were a young man that the Marines wanted to recruit into their ranks, they would serve you one of these drinks as an enticement to join the Corps. Because all of the Corps will be like this drink. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that, that's what they wanted you to think. It's not even close to being the truth. <laughs> so in order to make one of these happen, now this recipe, by the way, is traditional, but there are different mm -hmm. recipes that I've found. And so some of you out there may say, no, that's not how it's made. I have decided to take all the recipes that I found and pick what I think is either the most accurate mm -hmm. or the best tasting for today's world. This isn't supposed to be a challenge. I'm gonna put five ice cubes in there and then I'm gonna put two shots of dark rum. And then two shots of lime juice. It's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to take two shots of honey syrup. This is one of those things where there's a lot of variation in the recipe. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's maple syrup, sometimes right. it's maple sugar. Sometimes they just say like simple syrup. Yeah. And I decided that honey was a good compromise because I think it's something that would have been readily available. Yeah, yeah I like that idea. Then I'm going to swirl this up. This is a punch. I'm not going to shape this like a cocktail. I mean, you could make this in huge batches and serve it in a punch bowl. Right, right, right. And then after I've swirled it, not before, but after I've swirled it, one shot of bitters on the top. And that way the bitters doesn't get completely mixed in and it's an aromatic. It's right up your nose when you take your first sip. Thanks for your help with the bar. Thank you, man. It was a pleasure. And the fact that I can cap it off with some 1775, that's the icing on the cake. All right. Cheers. Oh, freaking rock. Oh, yeah. Gotta wake you up. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed the building of the bar. I hope you enjoyed the building of this cocktail, and I hope you make yourself a 1775. And maybe even learned a little something. I hope you learned something. Yeah. You can look Rob up. You can find him online. Yeah, you can find me at IamRobNorth.com, and you can find me on uh, TV on the CW every Saturday morning. It's called Save Our Shelter on the CW. I, I ain't hard to find. And we'll put some links in the description for him down below. And you'll also, in the description down there, you'll find links to my social media. You can follow me there and find stuff that doesn't end up as videos. You can, can subscribe to this channel and see more stuff like this, more cocktails, more builds like the bar and fixing up my old house. And you can give this video a thumbs up. That'll help me out. And share it with your friends. Sure. They probably want a 1775 as well. I'm gonna need another one of these real soon. Right? In the meantime, while we finish these, see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.